I'm Harriet Mansball, Associate Professor of Medicine from McMaster University, and I'm so honored and delighted to have my friend, Professor Holger Thiele from the University of Leipzig in Germany here at ESC 2023 to discuss his hotline trial, ECLS shock that has been transformative. Welcome, Holger. It's a pleasure for me to be here. <laughs> I'm going to start by asking you to tell us about um, ECMO. How does it work and why has it become so popular in the use of cardiogenic shock? So for ECMO you have to insert two cannula or usually even three. So you have to insert a large cannula into the um, venous excess into the right atrium and another cannula, into, um, large cannula for, um, into the femoral artery. Um, usually we install a, an additional anti-grade cannula to prevent limp ischemia. And this is also what we have done in our trial. So 95% of the patients got an anti-grade cannula. So altogether three cannula for VA ECMO. The advantages of VA ECMO is that it can fully support the heart up to four, five liters. And um, the other advantage for sure, at least what people believe, is that we have oxygenation. So we also have um, a full lung um, <clears throat> um, support. So we have the combination, heart and lung support with VA ECMO. Okay. Um, and, you know, this trial follows a previous trial of yours that demonstrated that balloon pumps that were commonly used were not efficacious in this setting. Um, so tell us about the research question you sought to answer with this trial and how you chose to approach it. Yeah. So as you mentioned, IBP Shock 2 is now 11 years um, um, in 2012 when we have published this. Mm -hmm. And probably this was also a shock for everybody mm -hmm. that the angiotic balloon pump with the class 1 recommendation in the guidelines did not work. Now, at least in the European guidelines, we have a class three recommendation now. Mm -hmm. And as a reflex, this is what we all did. Um, we were now using more impeller, active mechanical circulatory support, the same as um, for VA ECMO, mm -hmm. because inter the boom pump did not work. So we believe we have to um, <clears throat> now take active mechanical circulatory support. Problem with that is without having any evidence. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why we said, okay, we go for a large scale randomized trial how out for 30-day mortality, comparing these patients with severe cardiogenic shock, randomizing them to VA ECMO versus control. Mm -hmm. um, I love the choice of your primary outcome. You know, it's, it's in proximity to the intervention and um, it's clinically relevant, it's relevant to the healthcare system. Uh, how many patients did you anticipate needing to recruit to have enough statistical power given the event rate? So based on our sample size calculation, we needed 420 patients. We assumed a 49% mortality in the control mm -hmm. based on all our previous trials and registries in patients with cardiogenic shock. And we assumed a 14% reduction in all cause mortality by ECMO. At this time, we only had one meta-analysis of based on observational data, mm -hmm. and this meta-analysis suggested a 33% um, reduction in mortality with a wide confidence interval. We have chosen the <clears throat> lower confidence, so 14%. So this was the available evidence at the time. This is exactly this is what we used for the sample size power analysis, and we had a power of 80%. Sure. So tell us about the inclusion criteria. Yeah, the inclusion criteria were very similar to IVP shock 2 and also very similar to corporate shock. Um, so we included patients with acute myocardial infarction mm -hmm. and cardiogenic shock um, with um, a culprit lesion which needed to, needed to be identifiable. And the only difference in comparison to the previous trials is that mm -hmm. we now had an obligatory lactate of more than three. What sure. we wanted to do is to enhance the risk of some patients. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why we went for um, lactate of three. And mm -hmm. based on what we knew from our previous trials, patients with lactate of more than three have a mortality of 49%. And this is exactly what we, in the end, also found. <clears throat> uh, and so patients um, were recruited across uh, a couple of countries. Yeah, Tell us. Two countries, mm -hmm. um, Germany and um, Slovenia. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> altogether 44 sites 
participate in this randomized trial. Right, and so they had to have cardiogenic shock and an elevated lactate. I thought that your eligibility criteria were pretty broad and representative of those who are um, admitted with cardiogenic shock and acute MI. Um, tell us about the baseline characteristics of your patients. Yeah, so the me median age was a little bit um, more than 60 years. Mm -hmm. um, this is also, so we had an upper age limit of 80. Mm -hmm. okay. And this is also one of the reasons why the median age was a little bit lower in comparison to IVP shock 2 mm -hmm. and also lower in comparison to cryptic shock where we did not have an upper age limit. Mm -hmm. So 60 years in median, um, mm -hmm. majority male, um, but this is probably the disease, cardiogenic shock, more patients, um, w uh, male patients develop cardiogenic shock. Lactate was in median a little bit more than six, so this were really mm -hmm. very sick patients. One um, thing we have observed and which has been criticized, um, we had a higher rate of patients having undergone resuscitation before randomization. Um, this is probably an effect of the risk because we enhance the risk of the patient by the lactate of more than three. And <clears throat> this also led to a higher rate of have patients having undergone resuscitation before they were randomized. And tell us about the duration of time between the diagnosis of cardiogenic shock and then the insertion of ECMO. This is what we do not know very well. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> the problem is to identify the onset of shock in these patients is usually very difficult to assess because these patients are more than 90% of the patients were intubated and ventilated. So you don't know when, <clears throat> you, at least you can't ans ask the question of the patient uh, when shock started. Um, <clears throat> at least we have it for a little bit more than 60%. Um, we know it, mm -hmm. at least in the electronic case report form. It was <clears throat> roughly um, a little bit less than an hour. So okay, it's, so not, it's not too long. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then tell us about your um, analytic plan. We chose the outcome of 30-day mortality. Was it? Intention to treat analysis. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> there were some we, crossovers. Yeah, there were crossovers, um, like always in such trials. So we did not allow to insert ECMO in the control arm, but in the end it happened in 22 patients. Mm -hmm. um, so this is something you cannot control you right. in, such a, in such a trial. So the investigators, they believe this is a patient who needs an uh, <clears throat> ECMO, and that's the reason why they have put it in. Um, but there were also some patients in the ECMO arm which did not, who did not get um, an ECMO. There were many patients dying before <coughs> the ECMO could be started. Um, nevertheless, we also performed an estrated mm -hmm. and a per protocol analysis um, mm -hmm. to have more robust data on this. Mm -hmm. So tell us your primary findings. Point, yeah. So as I already mentioned, so we found exactly a 49% mortality in the control group. Mm -hmm. So our projection <coughs> regarding sample size calculation was um, quite good. Mm -hmm. The problem is <clears throat> that we did not find a mortality reduction by um, the VA ECMO or ECLS. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the mortality was 47.8% mm -hmm. and the p-value is um, 0.81. So mm -hmm. there's really no signal <clears throat> of a mortality benefit by VA ECMO. So as neutral as one could <clears throat> find, um, for this intervention that's become so commonly used across countries in the world, um, important findings. Tell us about the safety events. Uh, one could say neutral, but if you look for the safety events, it's, some people could even say it's negative because we had more bleeding complications, severe bleeding complications by BARC 3 to 5. So bleeding complications were nearly three times higher. Mm -hmm. And we also had more limb ischemia in requiring intervention because of the large bore cannula excess. Mm -hmm. Although we have used anti-grade perfusion cannula in 96%. So mm -hmm. this is an issue. Mm -hmm. You put in these devices and you have more complications. And this is what we have to keep in mind when we are still believing in some specific possible um, patient subgroups where we should, should uh, still think or believe that ECMO may be beneficial. Sure. Um, so really transformative findings um, from your work, from this trial, from your entire body of work, really. Um, more harm than good uh, in an adequately powered, randomized clinical trial that was a multi-center trial in a 
very pragmatic population overall that was slightly risk enriched, um, but nevertheless, the kind of patient we see with AMI and cardiogenic shock, were there any differences in co-interventions between the groups in terms of invasive care, medical all therapy? Was, all the same. In particular, we also had secondary endpoints. Mm -hmm. This is probably also important. So we were looking for lactate. There was no difference. There was renal function. There was no difference. Um, and also intensive care unit scoring, SUPS2 score, was there was no difference. Mm -hmm. But we found some differences um, regarding length of mechanical ventilation mm -hmm. and also the length of ICU stay. And for me, this was a surprise to see patients on VA ECMO, they had longer time on me mechanical ventilation and they also had a longer time on the ICU, which is probably an effect because these patients have the um, <clears throat> ECMO in place and that's the reason why they stay longer on the ICU. This may also have affected, we don't know it if it's causal, but usually longer intensive care units stay, longer ventilation um, um, in time is usually also negatively impacting the outcome. Sure, and probably associated with greater costs to yeah. the healthcare mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, any subgroups that you think uh, there might be some benefit in, or should we offer these interventions to younger patients, uh, patients who present with certain clinical characteristics? Any hint of potential use or should we just drop the use of ECMO? Yeah, very good question. So we look for lots of subgroups, younger patients, patients with higher lactate versus lower lactate, STEMI versus non-STEMI. Also, we performed a post hoc um, subgroup analysis on patients having undergone resuscitation versus no re re um, resuscitation. Um, P value for interaction was always non significant for all the subgroup. Mm -hmm. Maybe important also to add, we were able to additionally perform an, in, an individual patient data meta analysis mm -hmm. on all the four randomized trials which have been performed so far. Altogether, close to 600 patients in, um, in the individual patient data meet, and as the results are exactly the same. Right. Mortality neutral, <clears throat> more complications, and once again, also subgroup analysis, no subgroup having any benefit. We were even able to additional uh, subgroup analysis like patients with TB flow 0 or 1 versus mm -hmm. patients with TB flow 2 or 3, no difference. We were also able to analyze um, those patients having got the ECMO before revascularization versus mm -hmm. after revascularization. Once again, no difference in the outcome. Right. So overall, in the setting of acute myocardial infarction and cardiogenic shock, ECMO did not reduce 30-day mortality and, in fact, increased adverse events, prolonged length of stay, probably burdened the healthcare system more. We can potentially await some cost-effectiveness analysis, perhaps, um, and uh, really um, should give us pause to consider inserting this intervention or device in patients who present with cardiogenic shock. Thank you so much for being with us and for sharing the results of your exciting trial. Congratulations. Thank you. Pleasure.